Hey, beautiful people. I want to introduce you to an idea that will help you write better documentation that will meet your users where they are, let them choose their own adventure in terms of complexity and depth. And it's going to be super easy for you to write and maintain. Let's go. Writing good documentation is challenging. You want to include all the relevant details, but you don't want to overwhelm the audience. And you're going to have audiences from different experience levels. Reading documentation is challenging too. The author might assume experience that you don't have or might leave out detail because they're writing to a less experienced audience. It isn't just challenging, it's impossible. A single document can't be all things to all people at all places. I want to sell you on an idea I'm calling cognitive breakpoints. If you're familiar with web development, you may be familiar with responsive design, which uses breakpoints in the viewport to allow you to adapt your content to the size of the user's browser. Cognitive breakpoints allow your content to be adapted to the user's experience level and desired depth of learning. Imagine a slider that lives at the top of your documentation, and it starts out in the middle. It gives you the basic stuff you need to know with a little bit of detail. But if it's too confusing, if you don't have the background that's expected, no problem. You can just slide the slider down, and you'll get a more simplified version. If you want more detail instead, no problem. Just slide the slider up. You'll get all the gory details, more examples, and further reading. And you can imagine a lot of little breakpoints along the way. Let's jump into a real world example. Here's some documentation about JSON RPC. Now, this isn't the best example, but bear with me because I think it does communicate the point. There are only five breakpoints in this example, but you could have as many as you want. As the documentation writer, you start writing at level five. You craft all the detail you think that someone would need to know to really understand the topic. So here we talk about the technology, a little bit about its background, what version it's on. We explain the underlying technologies. We talk about how client and server can be used interchangeably over time, that they're not fixed roles. We spell out some use cases, talk about the message types with the different fields. We even give some examples in code down below. So here's the JSON for asking the server to add 12 and five, and the response is 17. Here we get an error because we tried to add three and cat and the server can't do that. It talks a little bit about notifications and what they're useful for, and then even goes into batch requests. And finally, there's some further reading. As the documentation writer, I work backwards from here. So depth four will have a little less detail. Here we've taken out the code examples, but we still have most of the content. We dial it back to three. We're, again, we're back at the middle ground here, so we've taken out more content. Two has even less, and one is about as simple as we can make it. JSON RPC is a standard for communication between a server and client. That's how it looks from the document writer's perspective. A nice side effect of this approach is that it makes sure that you really understand your content so that you can distill it down further and further and really refine your message. As a reader, we hop in here at whatever depth the writer decided would be a good starting place. In this case, it's three, middle of the road. At this point, we get to decide if we want less or more detail. Maybe we want to dial it back to one because this is a subject we have no familiarity with and we want to build our way up. So we read one until we understand it and then we can graduate to two. Or heck, maybe all we needed to know was in the first part and we don't care to learn more about it. That's an option that we have as a reader. But if we were doing this from a perspective of wanting to learn and become an expert at the subject, we could read one until we've really internalized it, then move on to two, wait until we've internalized that. Oh, okay, here's what the messages kind of do. Three, oh, okay, so that's what RPC is, and so on. We keep building up our understanding until we get everything that the author thought we could ever want to know. This feels like a powerful way to both teach and to learn. Let's look at how this example doc is written. In this folder, we have five files. One is a readme for the project. One is the command generate. One is the generated HTML. It's get ignored. The other is our JSON RPC document, and then we have a template of HTML. We'll start with the JSON RPC document. This is the markdown that you're used to with one caveat. The H1, the single pound sign, is treated as the start of a new depth, and you write it from deepest to most shallow. So here on line one, we start out our deepest version of this document. We talk about a bunch of different things, all the stuff that you saw before. And then eventually we get down to our second H1. So here we're taking the previous document and we're simplifying it a little bit. That goes great. We get down to our next one and then our next one and finally our last one. Because this is a shared markdown file, we are able to specify all of our links down below 
in a single place. If you want to make an edit here, let's say we want to replace a client and server with two machines. That's easy because we're in a single file. We can make that update everywhere. Now, certainly, you know, some things you're going to rephrase and simplify as you go, but having it all in one file makes it a little easier to manage. Now let's look at the generate command. Generate uses pandoc. We pass in our file name. We give it a flag of CSS equals blank because we don't want to bring along pandoc's own CSS. We give it the highlight style of pigments and our output file is generated.html. We tell it to use template.html as the template and then we give it the title of JSON RPC. Pretty straightforward. Now let's look at template.html. Templates are a powerful way to tell Pandoc how to generate your markdown into HTML with whatever CSS, JavaScript, and HTML wrapper that you like. You can use placeholders like we use on line four here to interpolate a title from Pandoc or other metadata. So this HTML probably looks like you would expect. We set up some CSS on line 54. We interpolate the Pandoc CSS for the syntax highlighting. We explicitly told it not to bring in other CSS styles, but we do want the syntax highlighting. We specify our slider and we give it a few different fields that we can decorate with JavaScript. It starts off with a min of one and a value of one, but we infer that from the content shortly. On line 66, we interpolate our body and then our script tag starts. So what the script is going to do is to get the two elements that we care about in the first place, which are our depth slider and then our H1s. For each of the H1s, we're going to wrap them in an article. Uh, this allows us to show and hide things as the slider is changed. On line 95, we get all the articles. On line 97, we set the depth max to be the article's length. And then we get the depth to default value either from a URL param or we set it to one. Next, we have a show article function. It takes the desired value that you want to go to, the incoming index, it parses it as an integer, and then it hides everything that doesn't match that and shows the one that does. Finally, on line 114, we update the text content that shows the currently selected value to be the actual value. On line 117, we set up our listener so that the slider updates the content. And then on line 123, we set the initial state. That's all there is to it. You can start writing powerful documentation today from a single markdown file with a little bit of HTML and JavaScript. This documentation will free you as a documentation writer to not have to worry about the audience level. You can write as much detail as you want and then let the user opt into the level they're familiar with. And as a user, you don't have to worry about the documentation being written over your head or too simplified. You can get exactly the level of detail you want and use the slider to learn things at your own pace. Check out the links in the description to play with this example in your own browser and to view the source on GitHub. So what's next? I'd like to write a DocuSource plugin to really test out this approach on documentation. Then I would apply that to the documentation on my company's website. Next, I want to try it out on my personal website so that you can adjust the slider to learn more or less about who I am and what I'm up to. Finally, I think there's some interesting implications here for command line applications. Imagine in your CLI you do dash dash help and maybe pass some other flag to specify the verbosity of that help. Or maybe there's an interactive mode. There's lots of potential here. I feel like there's a lot to learn here and there's probably a lot of things that I'll change long term, but it feels super compelling and powerful. Let me know what you think in the comments. Do you think this has legs or is it a silly idea? What concerns do you have? Anywhere you'd like to take it next? And give this video a like if you enjoyed it. It really helps me out. Thanks.